This is the 8th or maybe the ninth video in the series depending on how you look at it and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about creating some interesting types of macros and uh, one of them is a macro where you can f create a macro that will find a particular record uh, you can create a macro to print records or reports and you can also create a macro to uh, email people so you can create it and and also after that I'll show you um, when you want to find a record and you want to find it by creating like a search box so you can type a name or something and it will do a search for it so I've, I have the sample which I've been using for a while and I'll try to put a link to um, to the in the description below so you can download it and it will be in a zip format and uh, also there might be a file associated with it in which I'll have some instructions. Uh, so to do this, uh, the first thing I want to show you is how you can create um, a find button so that it will find for something. And uh, to do that, we'll try to create a macro. So I'll go to the Create tab and then I'll go to Macro. And then from here, uh, I'm going to start creating it. Now, whatever I'm showing here applies to 2007, 2010, and 13. So I'm trying to do it in all together. So I click here, and the first thing I want to do is I want to open the form. Because if my form is not open, then I need to first of all open the form. And then I need to choose which form. So in this case, I've got this form employee list, so I can choose that. And you can choose to view it as a form or you can even view it as like a data sheet if you need it. And then there are some other things you can set like conditions and stuff which we don't need to do at this point. So after I open the form, I need it to go to a control. So I choose the option that will say go to control. What does this mean? Because in my form, I've got different fields, first name, last name. So which field do you want to go to? So I'm just going to put first name. Now how do you know what is the name of the control? So I'm just going to double click on my form here. And I'll go to the design view or the layout view, either way. And then right click here and go to properties of that field, the first name. And you will see when you go to other, that's the name. So in this case, it's first name, which is usually coming from the field name you've typed in the table. So this, but this is a way to make sure that you've got it right. So I can close this. So that's what I put in there. Now, once I do this, now I need to run something that's called find record. And then I can choose find what? So I can say, let's find first name Rob. Okay. And then you can choose whether you want to match the whole field, and there are different criteria here. Do you want to match the case or not? If I want, I can choose yes. If I want it to be capital R only, um, searching up or down, and then some other options you can look at. Now, I'll show you in afterwards how you can deal with this, that you don't want to look for Rob, you want to look for something else. So we'll talk about that later. And now I can hit the Save button in the right-hand side corner. Or when you try to hit the X, it will ask you to do that. So I'll hit save and then I'll just give it a name. This one will be find Rob. Always meaningful wordings will be very useful. I'll click. I'll close this and there is my macro, which I can go to right click, I can rename or I can design view to design it. Okay. And you can even run it. So let's see if I run it, what happens? So you see right away it brought me to Rob. Now what I want to do is um, I want to put this as a button on my form. So you could put it on any form, but for practice I'm just going to go to the Create tab and go to Form Design. And in the design I'm going to use this com the button here. So I click it and I'll drag it here. Now you can go through the I think the application or no sorry miscellaneous run macro next choose the macro there will be more than one listed if you had more next and then you can give it a name find rob or whatever you want to call it or even if when this window comes up you cancel it and you go to right click and go to properties and then in the event you choose on click you choose the macro find rob 
and now if you want you can go to format and in the caption you can change it to say press to find Rob and I can close it now to test this I come to the form view now let's see if I press it it opens the form and finds me Rob so that's one thing and I'll come to the layout view or maybe the design view of the form again now what I want to do is I'll just keep this open and if I want I can just save it I'll hit the save button and I'll just call it form buttons or something like that just for practice so now I'll have it there now the next one I want to do is say I wanted to create a button to print something so I go to back to create macro now what I would do is I'll choose like first of all what is it that you want to print so first we need to decide what is it that you would like to open so I'll say let's open a report so I have this report called employee full list so I'll choose the report name employee full list because that's the only one I have saved at this time and you can filter by different things and you can put condition and just to remind you that you know you can have like if conditions and things like that so you can start thinking in a creative way that you can actually put different conditions in there saying that if a certain condition is matched then only print it or something now once I have the report open now I need to choose a print option so I'll go in the alphabetical op and I'll say print object you can also go to the print preview option there and after that I just want to say that once it's this is done close the window so I don't have that part open okay so you can choose now here when you point to these things they'll always give you an explanation so you don't have to like memorize it it says that if you leave it empty it will just close the one that's opened by default or you can choose if it wasn't there and then you can prompt where it is okay so would you like to save this if there was something going on or do you like to be prompted if some changes were being made now I'll click save and I'll just call it print full employee list just to be very clear about it I click OK now I can close this macro now what I'll do is I'll click in the design up here on the top the form design because I still have it open and I'll choose the command the button again and I'll drag it here and again if I want I can just hit escape or I'll go to miscellaneous run macro click next I'll choose print email click next and I can even give it a name here so I can just call it print full employee list and I'll click next and I'll click finish so let's see if I come to the front end the form view now if I click on this it's asking me how would you like to print it I don't have a printer set up here but you could choose one of your printers and then you can click OK and you can also choose the copies and now you see as soon as I hit cancel that window closed because we had set the command there to do that All right. so now the third one we'll look at is the email part so I'll go to create first we'll create the macro and then I'll add the button here and I'll go to macros and uh, what is it that I want to do is I want to email something so I'll click here and I'll choose email database object and now it will ask me so which object is it so I'll say let's uh, send the report and you see you can even send the table or a query so I'll send the report and then what is the name of the report because you could have multiple ones so I'll click report full employee list now output format which is how would you like the file to be attached so I can say let's attach it as a PDF you can choose any of those formats now here you can put the person's email address whoever it is that you want to send it to uh, or you could just leave it blank and then you can fill it up later so I'll just put something there for now and you can put something in the CC which is a carbon copy of this email and the BCC which is the blank so whatever email addresses are there nobody will know who the other people are in this part of this list uh, I believe with Outlook in the TO section if you had created in the contacts like a group um, and you had called like say uh, report list and you had added some email addresses to that you could put that in the TO section 
in the subject I can just put whatever it is and I can only type the message and do you want to be editing the message you want people to allow to edit the message you can say no if you did not want people to change the messages now I can click save and I'll just call it email full employee report and I'll click OK and I'll close it now from the home of this form I'll come back to the design view and I'll click in the button and I'll drag it now again I could just hit cancel if I want it right click go to properties and then in the event on click drop down button I'm gonna choose email full employee report I can go to format and then in the caption I can just type the word email full report and I can close this now let's see if I come to the front-end form view and I'm gonna click on this email full employee report now if you have Outlook or uh, maybe Thunderbird I suppose that should work through if that is set up or any other email program like you cannot use this with like Yahoo or Gmail or Hotmail you have to have some kind of an email client installed in your computer so you see that attachment is added here and there's my message and I can type whatever I want and then hit send so this is the way you can set up all of your email buttons in there and as I said if you leave the TO empty it will prompt you and you will have to put something there and you can always right click on these and go to design view and then you can add more things in here if you needed to you can add whatever else you wanted to do you can cancel a line out uh, let me show you the other one where I have more than one so you can delete one you can even move things up or down so I can move this line down if it needed to be down so you can make all those changes so I'll just close all these okay so so this was looking at how to create these type of buttons I think I had talked about one type of button in the previous video but this email was something new and now I want to talk about is the problem where you wanted a search box in which somebody would type something and then you want to hit the search button and then the search button will find you those records that you needed so I'm just going to close this say yes to saving it so uh, for that you know you need to have some kind of a form already created so in this case there is this form here and what I want to do is maybe on top of here I want to add like a search box and in the search box you're gonna put something in it and then you're gonna hit the search button and that will go and find you something so so that's the idea in here so I have the form open and we'll go to from the home I'll come to either the layout view or the design view in 2007 this you won't be able to do it in the layout view like if I come here like I believe these buttons are not there in 2007 in 2010 and 13 they are there but it doesn't matter you can come to design view and uh, I can just right click and highlight the whole thing and then I can drag it down to make some room here on the top and now I'll take this text box button click it one time and I'll drag it here okay. now I'll right click on this box here and I'll go to properties and in the other I need to give this guy a name now this name is important because this is the control name because that's the way when I create the button the macro the macro will be looking what's typed in there so I can type in your search box or maybe search text now make sure that you are typing it properly capital letters and everything no spaces I prefer not to and then I can even click here and on this label and I can go to the format and in the caption I can type enter first name so in this case I'm trying to find somebody by their first name for example now I can close this so that's set up done now I want to create the macro because this part is done so let's go to create and I'll go to macro 
and I need to create the macro. Now in this case, uh, the macro that I'll be creating is going on this form which is already open. So I don't need to open the form. If it was not, if this button was going to be sitting on its own, then I will say that let's open this particular form and once you've opened it, now search for a record. But in this case, I can just go straight for the command, the macro command that would be search for record. So right away I can do that. And now I can choose the object type is a form and the object name is the form employee list. And this is where we need to do something where it says where condition. So you can even go into the expressions and you can look at the builder. But I've just copied something here. And this is something that we need to paste it in there. So I'm just going to paste it and then I'm going to explain to you what it is. So I'm just going to paste it here. So the first is first name, which is the name of the controls. So that is when I'm, I'm going to come back to this employee list, this first name, when I go to the properties and in the other, there's that name, the control name, which we've talked about earlier. So that is what is that first name equal. And I've got some, like you can just look at it and just, you don't need to memorize it it's got it's trying to join it together and this is the way it works and then the forms and then in here I've got the name of the form the form employee list and it has to match exactly and then the search box now in this case I didn't use the word search box I used the word search text now you have to be careful because if you type the wrong thing it will be a problem and in 2010 and 13 it gives you the tooltip so which is good in 2007 it does not give you that option okay. so this is set up with the name of the form and the text the box for it and also which field it needs to look in the name of the field now I can hit save and I'll give this search first name I'll click OK so that's added and I can close this window now I need to add a button here that when I hit it it's going to search whatever is typed in this box so in the design I'm going to click on the button and then I can drag it now again I can just hit escape or cancel and then I can right click on it go to properties in the event on click I'm going to choose that button search first name and in the format, in the caption, I'll just call it search. And I can close this. Now let's see if this works. I can just click here and expand this a little bit. And I'll come to the form view. And here, let's see if I type the word Rob. And I'm going to hit the search button. And let's see, right there, found me Rob. So that's good. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. I would highly recommend that if you wanted to look into the help section here, uh, check out all the macros and what they do, you know, do a search for it so that you are familiar with all the things that can be created and all the expressions that can be do. Yeah, there are data macros and there's a lot of different things you can look into and just have an idea because a lot of these macros could solve your problem. Um, and if it's not there, then you'll have to start looking into Visual Basic and writing your own commands to do things. So I hope you found this video useful. I just wanted to do one last thing. Make sure this is working. Type the word Paul and I hit search and it finds it. Thank you for watching.